Oh, good morning. Good morning, sir. You have an advance of that for six weeks? There you go. People of the state of Michigan versus Catherine Bernadette, is it Kuma? Kuma 226943 SM. Ms. Kuma appears here in court along with her attorney, Dennis Tuzano. The prosecution appears by Prosecutor Lisa Richards. My docket indicates a plea. I do have an advice of rights and the terms to the agreement. Your Honor, essentially, the, the term of the agreement is that. The prosecution uh, will not object to a delayed sentence if the court is inclined to grant that. And uh, she is cooperating with testimony if need be on uh, a trial for the court sentence. Ms. Richards. Your Honor, that's not my recollection of our conversation. We have a letter. With the terms. Um, Ms. Puma is pleading no contest as charged in the complaint. She did submit herself to a follow up interview with police, Your Honor, um, and in exchange for her doing that and agreeing to cooperate in the cases of the defendants that proceed to trial, and that includes the offering of truthful testimony, uh, the people agreed to consider a favorable sentence recommendation. Um, I advised uh, Mr. Tucson on that I couldn't say at this juncture what that would look like. That's my understanding of our agreement. That's right, Your Honor. Is there any discussion, discussions on restitution? Um, no, Your Honor. Um, I believe in the two other cases that have proceeded to sentencing, one in this court and one in the family court, um, the order that was entered was approximately $3,100, if I recall correctly. Um, it's my understanding that that would be order joint and several in each of the cases that proceed to sentencing. Mr. Tuzano? That's my understanding. Uh, thank you. My recollection of the one that sentence that I did order, I did order joint and several, although I think I may have set a payment plan on that. You did. Okay. All right, then, concerning the matter, uh, Ms. Puma, first off, is that your understanding of the agreement? Yes, sir. And what is your true legal name, please? Catherine Bernadette Puma. Ms. Puma, I do have in front of me an advice of rights and free information form of your signature. Did you understand all of the rights contained in this form as you went through it with your lawyer? Yes, sir. You understand then you have the absolute right to have a jury trial in your case. And in some, some instances, you have a right to a trial by court or a trial by judge. Do you understand you have those rights? Yes, sir. Do you understand that if you chose to go to a trial, you could exercise each of the trial rights that are listed in this form? Yes, Your Honor. All right, I'm going to go over the charge against you. And do you have an objection to the no contest plea then, Ms. Um, Richards? Your Honor, not um, on the basis of potential civil liability. I have no objection. And I'm assuming that was your um, reasoning then behind the no contest plea, Mr. Tuzma? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right, then you're charged with aggravated assault. That is a misdemeanor. The maximum penalty you face on conviction is up to one year in the county jail and or up to a $1,000 fine plus court costs are added on. A consecutive sentence may be imposed if that assault was committed in a place of confinement. This offense resulted in damage to another individual's property or physical injury or death to another individual. Restitution could be a part of this charge. As well, if you're not a citizen of the United States, a conviction could result in removal or deportation from the United States.
exclusion from admission to the United States or the denial of naturalization. Moreover, you may have a difficult time entering into another country if this results in a conviction on your record. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. All right, then, Ms. Puma, concerning the case, what is your plea to the charge that I've just gone over with you? Um, <clears throat> I drove my vehicle. Oh, wait, no. Oh, no contest. No contest? All right. So we're recording here this morning, and we have to keep our voices up, all right? I just want to make sure the record is clear. All right, then, concerning the matter... Before I accept your no contest plea, I want to make sure that you do understand the rights you're giving up by pleading no contest. Do you understand then by pleading no contest, there's not going to be any kind of a trial? Yes, Your Honor. And do you understand you're giving up your right to exercise each of the trial rights listed in this form that you've signed? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand that a no contest plea is treated the same as a guilty plea for purposes of sentencing? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand that the court is free to impose any sentence that the court feels is appropriate up to the maximum provided by law? Yes, Your Honor. All right, then, understanding that and the other things I've gone over here with you this morning, does it remain your intention to plead no contest? Yes, Your Honor. Are you presently on probation or parole to any court? No, Your Honor. Outside of the terms of the agreement placed on the record, has anybody promised you anything in order to get you to plead no contest? No, Your Honor. Has anybody forced you or coerced you in any way to get you to plead no contest? No, Your Honor. Has anybody said to you the courts will simply be more lenient with you if you plead no contest? No, Your Honor. Are you pleading no contest freely, voluntarily, and understandingly? Yes, Your Honor. All right, counsel, as to the factual basis. Your Honor, I have a statement that uh, I'm prepared to read. Do you, have you seen it, Ms. Richard? No, Your Honor. I guess I'm confused. It says the no contest plea. I would assume that I was going to read it into the... Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. That's fine if you have to read it. How does that work? And then I'll supplement a little bit from the complaint just to tie down the report. Do you want to bring that forward? Is that all right, Ms. Richards? Yes. Mr. Tizano? Yes. All right, this is police agency report number M85568-22, CTN number 22-2200277-01, People of the State of Michigan versus Captain Bernadette Puma, with the victim or complainant being Trenton McWilliams, and alleges on or about April 1st, 2022, in Norway Township, Dickinson County, State of Michigan. Miss Puma did make an assault without being armed upon Mr. McWilliams and did inflict a serious or aggravated injury upon said person, but without intending to commit the crime of murder or to inflict great bodily harm less than the crime of murder. Probable cause portion indicates that Ms. Puma aided in the commission of an aggravated assault in that she drove the victim to the scene of the crime. Mr. The last night of the following, April 1st, 2022, I drove my vehicle with two girlfriends to Dickinson County. I drove to some acquaintance's house where they suggested that us girls should reach out to and pick up Trenton McWilliams so that we could bring him to some location where he would be assaulted by one of the acquaintances. Trenton McWilliams agreed to hang out with us and I picked him up in Norway. I drove all of us to the bottom of the Norway ski hill where we got out of the car. While we were outside the car, a number of guys wearing masks ran up to us and began beating up Trenton McWilliams. 
the attack only lasted a very short time and the guys ran away. I offered Trenton help, but he told us to leave. At that, at the time that I picked up Trenton and was driving him to the location, I knew the acquaintance wanted to assault him. As a result of the assault, I witnessed Trenton bleeding and believed he suffered serious or aggravated injuries. These events took place in Dickinson County. All right, then as to the elements of the crime, the defendant here, Ms. Puma, did in fact aid and abet at a very minimum in the physical injury to Mr. McWilliams. As indicated by the statement, uh, she intended that Mr. McWilliams be injured and in fact he was in fact injured in an aggravated manner in that he had broken teeth, potential concussion, stitches were needed to his eye. It did the assault cause a serious or aggravated injury, one that did in fact require immediate medical treatment and did cause a disfigurement impairment of health or impairment of a body. Concerning the matter, the indication from the statement was that um, the whole motion was set into place as they were consulting with the acquaintance, they reached out with the intent that the assault would be had at the location prearranged by the parties that Ms. Puma was involved in driving the vehicle to. She had knowledge that it was in fact going to happen, it did in fact happen. The elements of aiding and abetting under Michigan Criminal Jury Instruction 8.1 are also fulfilled in that she intentionally assisted someone else in committing the crime. That person is as guilty as the person who directly commits it and can be convicted of that crime as an aider and a better. In this particular matter, the alleged crime was actually committed as indicated by the acquaintance of, or acquaintances of Ms. Puma. She did in fact assist in the commission of that crime in that she drove to the scene. She sought Mr. McWilliams out for the purposes of being assaulted. She intended the commission of the crime and knew that it was a likely outcome and a natural and probable cause consequence of the commission of the crime of soliciting them out to be beat up. And therefore, along with the aggravated nature of the injuries as indicated and described and over which I am taking judicial notice in the file of the various medical documentation that has been filed with the court between Mr. Zanones and Ms. Uh, what's her name? First John Zeminski? Passamoni. Yeah. Passamoni. So um, I think that therefore, there is an adequate factual basis as indicated in all of those reports that I'm taking judicial notice of. Are you satisfied on behalf of the people, Ms. Richard? Yes, I am, Your Honor. Are you Mr. Tuzanon? Yes, Your Honor. Is either counsel aware of any promises, threats, or inducements in order to get this to a plea no contest that have not been placed on the record at this time, Mr. Tuzanon? No, Your Honor. How about you, Ms. Richard? No, Your Honor. Does counsel believe the court's compliant with the taking of pleas under MCR 6.610? Mr. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Richards? I agree, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Puma, I'm going to find then that your plea of no contest has been made this morning freely, voluntarily, and understandingly. I'm also finding that the elements of the no contest plea have been met. I'm going to accept your plea of no contest. In respect to a finding, I'm going to withhold any finding of guilt at this time, depending on what the consequences of this are going to be. You're going to proceed down to the probation department, and then they are going to be making a pre-sentence recommendation concerning this matter. Yeah. Um, 
we have a the prosecution I have uh, have a stipulation that we would present um, to the court uh, similar to the, the stipulation in the testimony case uh, to remove bond. Uh, I spoke with probation and probation had, had already run a pre-sentence for me based on um, well, that I was able to have that they were able to provide me or to prepare a stipulation if the court would um, can we see that, Mr. Chips? All right, I'll, I'll take a look at it. Would that, when would that start? We were prepared for her to have a vote for bond or vote today. All right, thank you. Do you have a recommendation? It's a, a second. Okay, we're not going to I did leave the, the date of the sentencing open because um, it was my understanding the prosecution would, would like to uh, wait a bit on her sentencing to see how the other court of sentence cases, um, whether they did or didn't resolve as much closer to their trial date. I, I didn't have records, Your Honor. I would just defer to the court in that regard. I think we're sending. January sometime. Oh, it's January 12th, look. Is that? Sure, I can make that work. Ms. Richard? That's fine, Your Honor. Uh huh? No. Oh, 9 a.m.? Sure. Okay. You want to come and sign this, Mr. Tibbon? Check it in and then I'll shuffle right on over to the jail. All right, so I was in the middle of my, um, I'm withholding the finding of guilt at this point in time. They're going to let you know how much your fines and costs are down of probation. They're going to do at the time of sentencing. All of your bond terms as amended here remain in place, meaning I've entered the, uh, 10 days with the credit for one day served, no good time. And then your bond as it was, with the conditions as reinstated after that time, pending your sentencing in January. Do you understand all that? Yes, ma'am. Anything else you want to address today, then, Mr. Tugum? No, Your Honor. Mr. No, Your Honor.
Let's just use it around here so we can have that. Okay. And I'll keep the original address. And then copy the Corey one to Dennis and one to Lou and to Lisa. I'm going to go to the 